Okay, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you how to tube assist feed uh, neonate copperheads. Uh, this is a video that was requested to be done since I have to do it with my guys. What I use is I use uh, two different types of tweezers. This one and my little forceps. I have these which are grilling tongs which I use to manipulate snakes. You always have your scissors so you can cut your meat. I don't always use pinkies because pinkies tend to explode when you're trying to push them down the mouth of a snake that doesn't want it. And you want to make sure you have your tubes. Now, obviously these have been modified. They're shorter than what they should be, so you have to be really careful with them when you go to use them. Because if you're not, you can get whacked. Okay. okay, one thing you need to make sure is that, especially if you're using meat, some people use chicken, beef heart, stuff like that. I like to use deer meat because I usually have a lot of it, and it's lean meat, so, you know, it's not bad, and neonates need protein more than really anything. But you want to make sure that it's cut the right size. This is a little big for the neonate that I'm going to be feeding, so I'm going to use my scissors, cut it, get it down about the right size that I need, and which, you know, it compresses a little bit, it's nice and spongy, and if I wanted to, I'd turn a little excess off of it there and talk good. Okay. Big things you need to pay attention to, especially if you have your snakes in a tub or anything like that, is where is my snake? Now, it's hard to see through the top of this, but I can look to the side and I can see where my neonate is. You can see it's right there. Hopefully it shows up good. So i got to pay attention when I open it, because it's easier to open these things from the lip than it is to, like, come over here. So I've got to pay attention to where he's at and open it up. You can see in there. I'm going to take, sitting over here in my uh, cat litter box, since it's what I prefer to use. I'm going to adjust here so my cameraman can see. Normally I wouldn't be sitting in the floor doing this, but today's a special occasion. <laughs> okay, use my grilling tongs and just very gently, you know, reach in and encourage him to bit spaz out on me. And not cut my tongs. Get out of there! There you go. You can see this one's nice and fat. You can take on the tail and away it goes. Okay. You can see I got my piece of meat laying out over here. Okay, what I want to do is I want to select the size tube. Now, he could fit in this tube, but they're getting big enough that it's a pain to assist feed them with it. So, I'm going to go for the bigger tube, which is a little bit shorter. And what you want to do is normally you can put them down in some water and they'll go right in. You just kind of guide them a little bit. But I prefer to do it this way. And sometimes it takes me a minute. So if I cut out until uh, I actually get it done, you have to excuse me. The first one did it. There we go. What you want to do is get them to go in there. And you want to get it about halfway. Just so you can safely grasp the body once they're in there. Got it? Yeah. Okay. You can see he's about halfway through the tube now. Now what you want to make sure that you do is you let them go up in there just a little bit, but you want to keep control of the body down here. You want to be able to gently pull them back or let them go up in there. And if you don't hold him firm enough, he's going to come out the end. And if he comes out the end, you're in trouble. Okay. Normally I have my meat warmed up, but this is room temperature, which is fine. And this is about the size of a little mouse pink that he would take in anyway. So what I'm going to do is carefully insert it down here in the bottom of the tube, and he's crapping all over me. Hang on. Open that mouth! Come on. Let me gently pull it back here and readjust. So I don't want him to come out in my lap. You probably want him to come out in my lap, but I don't. See him open his mouth a little bit? These guys are kind of used to this, but usually all you got to do is kind of poke, poke, poke. He said, that's pretty big, Mom. He normally doesn't get a piece that big. Let me trim that. You see him good? I ain't really going to trim it that much as much as I'm going to clip it. I got two pieces. Yeah. Okay. 
Not sure how well you can see him in there. No. Let's see him attack like a pit bull. I don't know if you've seen Denon or not. But, eh, well. but you might get down in there. Some of these guys will actually start swallowing on their own. But if they don't, you very carefully take your feeding tweezers, your tongs, or forceps, and you get right at the corner of the mouth and just very gently push and work it. And what you ideally what do is him not do that. Ooh, cut. Alright. Once you get in your mouth, give it a very gentle little push if you have to. You want to be really careful when you're doing this because you don't want to get it down the esophagus. Or down the esophagus. Down the windpipe, sorry. You want it to go down the esophagus, just not down the windpipe. Being very careful with that, so, because that can just give you a whole lot of other problems. Some of these guys get two pieces of meat, some of these guys get one piece of meat, it just depends. And since I'm doing this for someone, this guy's getting two. Now, you can do this with a pinky, too, in the same fashion. I'm hoping this kind of shows up decently. You can see he actually come forward and sort of swallowing on his own. But once you get past the venom glands, usually they won't spit it back up. So you're in the clear there when they do that. But you have to pay attention to this little kink when they kink their necks up like that because they can take and throw whatever you fed them back up if you don't uh, pay them a good deal of attention. And I've had more than one make me think that, oh, it's going to be okay. And bleh. Okay. He might be going to keep that down. But if he don't, we'll tube him and do it again. Alright. Now, when you go to release them, if you don't pay attention, they will thrash. And a lot of times they'll use that as a momentum enough to throw up whatever you give them. So what I usually do is I find out which way they want to go. If he wants to go forward, I will let him go forward to come out of the tube. And just let him slide right on out like that. And then from there, I'll give him a few minutes and let him swallow. Scoop him back up and put him back in his tub. While I clean the snake shit off my rug.